So quite often in online fitness communities, I see a lot of complaints for things, uh, for injuries to say shoulders and backs and they've been most common. And within this community, these communities, I wondered what could be done to actually prevent them from occurring as often as they are. I see a lot of people getting involved with the sort of five by five programming, you know, heavy compound lifts, whether it's strong lifts or uh, starting strength. These sort of programs are the sort of go-to and everyone encourages people to go that direction, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, if you want to better your health and you're not really doing anything in terms of exercise, this is a great place to start. But um, with these programs, I don't understand what the end goal is. For a lot of people, it's, it's just a hobby for them. And when you get to this point where you literally cannot lift any more weight, what do you do from there? I mean, it, when you're going up weight each session, it's really satisfying. It's satisfying to learn the lifts. It's satisfying to put on weight. And that's what people actually get inspired to go to the gym. So in that sense, it's really good. But what do you do when you can't lift any more weight? Because there is a limit to the amount of weight you can lift. So people, I think, don't have the long-term goal in mind. I think they just follow these programs that everyone else is doing rather than asking themselves the question of like, what, what do I want to do or what do I want to accomplish in the future? And then what do I want to set as a goal you know, long term, what do I want to be like when I'm old, what that sort of thing. People don't look at that. They just join this one way of seeing it. Now, with the right and wrong, people do see right and wrong in the gym. So for example, try to do a Nordic curl in the gym and not actually have someone look at you odd. Like everyone, well, some people don't care, but there will be people looking at the gym because it's so out of the norm. People in the people tend to see one direction or one um, one method of training as a priority. So my personal goal is to look like that old guy on the beach who's you know 60 or so and is still super fit. Like that's my goal. And so now my my training is is based around longevity. And you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna risk that because my program says that I'm supposed to lift more weight on this lift when last session it, it made me sore. So it doesn't really make sense. People tend to um, follow them um, a little little too closely and then not vary their actual training. It's not that I don't like this training method. I don't think it's a good place to start. I just think that, you know, for me in my limited experience, you know, I'm not huge. Um, I, I don't know like a great deal. But in what I've experienced, that this is the sort of conclusions that I've come to that it's not really worth training that way because you risk injury. Um, so I, I started weightlifting when I was like 18 years old. I, I wasn't that great at it. I fell into some pitfalls, one of which was just uh, tr tr trying all these different exercises in the gym and increasing weight before I could actually perform them correctly. Essentially what I was doing was treating the gym like a like an amusement park like there's this machine There's that cable, you know, there's free weights like you go around and just do whatever Which isn't effective and that that's my experience. I'm not saying that's everyone's experience, but it's quite it's quite common I still sort of see it but What I did then after a couple of years was try bodyweight fitness and then the the major difference was I wasn't sore after sessions I was like what, what's going on here. I realized that while I was performing the exercises, uh, the body weight fitness exercises, what would happen was I would tighten everything up to support my own body weight. Like that's why you, know, you see calisthenics athletes, they have really shredded abs because everything you do is requiring you to tighten your core. But it goes for the whole body really. And all those body weight fitness positions and gymnastics positions, you, you tighten the whole body. And I actually learned the mind muscle connection through bodyweight fitness because it forced me to actually control the muscles through all the movements, which I didn't actually do uh, when I was weightlifting. So for example, on my bench press, in order to lower the weight down, I used to just relax and then tighten on the way back up, which is wrong. And the body, by doing bodyweight fitness actually 
trained me to control on the eccentric as well. I've now applied that to my weightlifting and I've had no issues, no soreness, no, no problems. So um, like this is obviously my experience. Everyone's is unique, everyone finds their own way, but this is just one way that I've significantly benefited by doing uh, bodyweight fitness. So, the, and now the shoulder joint, it's, you know, it's, it's a ball and socket joint surrounded by the three heads of the deltoid and it's the scapula supports it and inside is the rotator cuff. The rotator cuff like intimately sort of surrounds the ball and socket joint. It's quite tender. You see a lot of people talk about the rotator cuff. They talk about internal and external rotation, which is pretty good, but none of that stuff really helped me. So when you look at the rate of injury among gymnastics and powerlifting or Olympic lifting, the, the injury rates seem to be pretty similar. They're not like too different, but what was different was the location of the injuries and the locations for the gymnasts were primarily in the wrists and ankles. And for weightlifters, it was knees, knees, shoulders, and back. Now, if you really enjoy weightlifting, if you're competitive, if it's just something that you do and you work, you know the risk, by all means do it. I don't, I don't understand why you couldn't. I just think there's a lot of younger people who are looking into the fitness and then they get down this path that doesn't actually align with their goals. But um, most people, they want size and aesthetics. They want this healthier lifestyle than doing nothing. So for that, I mean, just look at gymnasts. I mean, who wouldn't want to look like that? Obviously their training methods are effective and you know, maybe you just need to throw in a bit of extra leg work, which you can add weight to, which is, there's no problem with. Um, and other than that, the only other concern is people's numbers. Everyone gets this idea that you have to have, oh, they want to know your numbers. They deadlift, squat, bench. They want to know your numbers. Well, guess what? I don't deadlift at the moment, so I couldn't really tell you how much I could deadlift. Who cares? Like the only people who care, or well, the only time I'm going to care is if I consider other people caring. I don't because that that's not my goal you know i my goals are different and i define my goals therefore i train for that definition whereas other people just i feel like they just follow this program or this this mindset that everyone's in so that's more or less what i'm getting at here guys is train to your goals don't let other people define the goals for you till next time mm -hmm.